Flowers and plants are the food sources for pollinators. These creatures are vital to our food supply, so much that it's hard to imagine a world without them. We talked to some youth workers at Groundwork Somerville about why pollinators are important. So Groundwork is an organization um, that's basically, it's a national organization that kind of tries to clean up areas in like cities that have kind of had these like um, brownfield sites, so like industrial pollution, and um, it's actually like a part of the National Park Service. And um, so at Groundwork in Somerville, we do a lot of like urban farming um, and urban ag. Uh, we also do a lot of outreach in the community, um, selling our produce and teaching people about um, how to grow their own food and kind of like how to be a healthy life. Um, and we also do a lot of like social and environmental justice um, in the community. So we like advocate for different causes. Behind me, we have our pollinator poles, which um, we keep like mason and leaf cutter bees in those. Um, so we have like these like tubes where they like to make their homes because they don't live in hives. Um, and so they will hopefully find those and use them as like a nesting site. And then we encourage them to come to our farm with like all the different flowers that we have. Um, so most of the plants that we have flower, and then we also grow wildflowers to help attract um, different pollinators. So like we have a lot of different plants that are flowering plants in our um, at our farm that basically um, grow fruits like after they flower. And without pollinators, it would be a lot harder to grow like all of those different plants um, because most of the plants that we grow depend on pollinators. Back a few years ago, what we did was we built these large pollinator poles. And what those do is they attract mason bees. And mason bees are a lot better for our garden than honeybees because they're a lot more clumsy. So they often spread around a lot more pollen than a honeybee would. Uh, if there were less and less pollinators in the world, I believe a lot more vegetables and fruits and like different kinds of plants would be more endangered and if not die off. Because without the pollen to spread, there would be no way for them to really get around and grow bigger. We then talked to Jess, a farm manager at Groundworks, about pollinators. I would say um, my understanding is that there are some reduction in the number of pollinator numbers right now. Um, for us at South Street Farm, we have an urban farm and we've definitely had to do a lot of work to attract pollinators into the city. Um, so we have found that in cities, there's definitely, it can, there can be a lack of, of pollinators because they need a food source. So if there's not enough flowers um, for them to get the nectar from, um, we do see fewer numbers of them. The effects of that are really that when we want to grow vegetables, um, we have to be really intentional about trying to bring pollinators in because uh, they are the ones who pollinate our food and make sure that there's vegetables and fruits for us to eat. Um, we have found that flowers really are the key thing and, and different colored flowers attract different pollinators. Definitely over 50% of our food has a pollinator that's helping to make it, um, but specifically, you know, things that we don't even think about like chocolate, you know, chocolate has to be pollinated to be able to be, um, to be able to make that cacao that we think is so delicious and blueberries and um, all sorts of fruits that uh, we take for granted. Those are all dependent on a little creature coming and, and pollinating them for us. So. Yeah, it's really essential. I mean, I think our entire food system would collapse without pollination happening. In some ways, we're really weakening a lot of our pollinators by demanding that they kind of exist in um, monocrop farms that don't have a full ecosystem to support them. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter where you live in the world, they're the ones who are pollinating our food to be able to make that food crop for us. So um, one of the other pieces is that we have a global food system now. So all of that food that we think of um, as just coming from our grocery store is oftentimes right, coming from across the country or across the world. So it's really a global issue that will affect our lives regardless of where the pollinators are trying to survive. Sure, I mean, people can hand pollinate fruits um, and that 
uh, is possible and people do that all the time you know in hydroponic or indoor growing systems people can go from flower to flower with a little um, q-tip and pollinate it but it is um, extremely time consuming and when you think about uh, the work that a bee does um, you know in an hour it would take a human more time to do it and you know we have labor laws where we pay people to do that kind of work for us so it would be an insane um, prospect to try and think about humans pollinating instead of pollinators. Uh, I, I can't imagine that we could keep up with the demand.